Hello and welcome to week 12 of Friday Football Fever. I'm Jeff Jones and guys, this is our final episode of Fever of the season. It's also our first episode that features only playoff games. Now every team that enters the postseason does so with motivation, with emotion and with a lot of energy. But the guys at Liberty Hill, well, they're playing for something else this playoff season. They're playing for the memory of their head coach, Jeff Walker. As we told you 10 days ago, Coach Walker passed away following an eight year battle with cancer. Well, that means that over the past two weeks, the Panthers, for the first time in their high school careers, practiced and prepared for a game without Coach Walker's help. In his place, fittingly, Jeff Walker's younger brother, Kent, stepped in and prepared the Panthers against Glenn as the team's acting head coach. If you know Coach Walker, you know his biggest fear in life was to let these kids down. I'm really emotional and I'm just ready to go out there and play for him and just play for something that's higher than me. He definitely wanted us to be mentally tough about everything. Anytime um, the coaching fraternity uh, loses one, you know, it, it's tough. It definitely brought us all of us together closer to uh, help support each other. Every day's a blessing and and, and utilize what you're given uh, as long as you're given uh, to the best of your ability. Let's get moving with our QC Kinetics game of the week. It was a foggy night at Liberty Hill, but rain, snow, sleet or fog, you knew the Panthers were going to leave it all out on the field tonight in memory of Jeff Walker. Their helmets said it all right there. Walker tough was written on them and Blake Simpson has proven that he is exactly that tough. The six foot two, 200 pound running back has the strength of the big boys, but he can run like the little guys. His 60 plus yard score was the first of a few explosive plays for the Panthers. Charles Calabretta called dibs on the next big play. The senior quarterback followed his pulling guard and went untouched for a 25 yard touchdown. Then the defense showed us one reason they have pitched four shutouts this season. And Thomas was in the right place at the right time to recover that fumble. The Panthers stay perfect on the season, pitching their fifth shut out of the year. They beat Glenn 51 to zero. Guys, now that you know the score, you've seen some of the highlights and you know the backstory, but there's another level to it. I'm going to bring in my good friend Emily Jean Greco and Emily. I don't know if emotional is even a, a big enough word to describe how this game felt after the game. You had a chance to chat with interim head coach Kent Walker. How'd that conversation go? You're right, Jeff. There really isn't a word to describe this. So we're just going to say, obviously, it was an emotional one. This was Liberty Hill's first game since their head coach, Jeff Walker, ended his eight year long battle with cancer. And when you have a final score of 51 nothing, I think it's obvious that they were playing for him. In fact, the entire community had a chance to honor him during halftime tonight. Before Coach Walker passed away, he won the Sponsor Excellence Award. And tonight, his family was presented the trophy for it at halftime. Time. His brother Kent, who is currently interim head coach, embracing Jeff's wife and kids, the entire stadium standing, applauding, and remembering Coach Jeff Walker. When I spoke with Kent following tonight's win, it's understandable that he was filled with so many different emotions. I'm, I don't know. I mean, I'm so proud of our young men. Um, they, uh, they came out here, and you know, we, we've had a crazy, crazy two weeks. Everybody knows. Um, so I may get emotional here, but. Uh, you know, it, it's just, I can't, couldn't be more proud of our coaches and our, and our kids. They, they just did an awesome job tonight. I, I love them. I heard you talking to them and you said, there's someone looking down on us. Could you feel your brother tonight? <laughs> oh, I, 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 it gives me chills thinking about it. I definitely can feel my brother tonight. No, no doubt about it. If, what, what do you think he would say to you right now if he saw that you got a win? Oh, he's just, yeah, congratulations. You know, we're, we're uh, you know, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words, really. Well, Coach, congratulations from us. We're so Thank proud you. of you, and Thank we're looking forward to continuing to cover you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you all. A lot of emotions there. Tonight's victory is the fifth shutout win for the Panthers so far this season. And Jeff, I got to tell you, I loved when Kent Walker said he could feel his brother tonight looking down on him, looking down on this team. And I have a feeling that they're going to continue to fill Jeff Walker's presence throughout the rest of their season. 
Yeah, Emily, I think you're right. You know, I, I don't even know if I actually told you this story or not, but our photographer J.P. Harrington and I were out here before the game kicked off and we saw the fog. We heard the Liberty Hill uh, band and, and fans and players talking and he and I looked at each other and we were like, something's different about this game. So I completely agree with coach with what coach Kent Walker said. Uh, someone was watching down on them tonight. Back to just football, though, the action that was going on on the gridiron, and we saw one of the best defenses in town, Vandergriff, line up against one of the best quarterbacks in town. That's Austin High's Charles Wright. And uh, Austin High wanted to do something today that they hadn't done since 1957. That's 63 wins, and that is win a playoff game. Interesting fact here, the last time that Austin High won a playoff game, they were led by another future Longhorn quarterback, Mike Cotton. Let's go ahead and roll the highlights and show you what happened tonight. Charles Wright showed off that defense. One talent on this throw to the corner. Drew Morgan got the toes down right there on the left sideline to make it a three point game. Then it was Ryan back. He says, I'm bringing touchdowns back. Yep. The Vipers went up by 10 in the third. They go on to win by more than that. Vandergriff advances 45 to 24. Emily, I know you were just here, but I hope you didn't go too far. I need some more scores for you. Uh, tell me what's been going on around town. Jeff. You already know, I'm standing six feet away. We are keeping safe here in Friday football fever. For the big schools in our state, the playoffs actually kicked off last night. And if you missed these scores involving local teams, of course we got you here at KVU. So Canyon, they won this one over Pflugerville, final score 2017. And then Lano falling short, final in that one 53-28. And the playoffs continue tomorrow in the afternoon. Georgetown will host Dripping Springs. Both the Eagles and Tigers topped 60 points in their regular season finale. So expect them to light up the scoreboard in that one. That game is going to be at 1 o'clock. And then over in Giddings, Regents will take the field against Second Baptist. A win would send the Knights back to the state championship game for the fifth year in a row. That game also at 1 o'clock, Jeff. Five straight years. Wow, that's big time right there. Guys, back to the highlights, and here is the upset of the week. Round Rock hosted Lake Travis, and the Dragons' pass rush is something serious. Big Luke Dodge with the first quarter sack. And then check this out. The fans said, we want more. We want more. Well, Seth Ford delivered that. He rolled out one way and then threw it back across his body, back across the field, right into William Lane's hands. Now, Lake Travis is one of the best programs in the state, so you knew they'd respond. Aiden Navas reversed, tied the game up. But this night belonged to the Dragons. Guys, check out the score. Round Rock sent Lake Travis home in the first round. That's a big time shocker, and the score is shocking too. They won by two touchdowns. Final score in this one, 35 to 21. It has been a full three weeks since Westlake stepped on the game field, but it turns out they're still really good at football. Cade Klubnick found Jaden Greathouse. The sophomore receiver has college scholarship offers from Texas, Oklahoma, Baylor, Arkansas, and I think you can see why. That Klubnick to Greathouse combo is almost as good as my favorite combination, a number two with bacon and a Powerade from Whataburger. I think that's on the menu for me later tonight for the Shaps, where they ordered up a first round win with a side of confidence. Final score in this one, Westlake 57 to 14 and let's keep the highlights going now to a private school six man state championship game texas school for the death lost to veritas academy to open the season and they lost big 58 to 25 in that one but tonight they got payback payback and much more they got a big trophy at the end of this one the trick play in the fourth pushed the game out of reach tsd wins its first state championship in 63 years that number 63 well it's pretty important and you can see why final score in this one 63 to 32. Guys, we have updated you on eight games so far and two that will kick off tomorrow, but we have much more left to show you. Scores, highlights, our band of the week and our play of the week nominees are all coming up next.